Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl and today I'm going to read two stories about diversity and afterwards I'll show you how to make a handprint rainbow craft. The first story is called All Are Welcome. It's by Alexandra Penfold and Suzanne Kaufman. The publisher is Alfred Knopfs. It's a division of Random's House Children's Books. Pencils sharpen in their case. Bells are ringing. Let's make haste. School's beginning. Dreams to chase. All are welcome here. No matter how you start your day, what you wear when you play, or if you come from far away, all are welcome here. In our classroom, safe and sound, fears are lost and hope is found. Raise your hand, we'll go around. All are welcome here. Gather now, let's all take part. We'll play music, we'll make art. We'll share stories from the heart. All are welcome here. Time for lunch. What a spread. A dozen different kinds of bread. Pass it around till everybody's fed. Or all are welcome here. Open doors, rush outside. We will swing, we will slide. We'll have fun side by side. All are welcome here. <clears throat> We're part of a community. Our strength is our diversity. A shelter from adversity. All are welcome here. All are welcome here. So much to learn, so much to do. And when the busy day is through, can't wait to come back, start anew. All are welcome here. Head for home to get some rest and greet tomorrow ready and fresh. All are welcome here. You have a place here. You have a space here. All are welcome. The next story I'm going to read is called A Ticket Around the World. It's by Natalie Diaz and Melissa Owens, illustrated by Kim Smith. And the publisher is Chirp, Chickadee, and Owl Publishers. Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a small country in Central America with over 4.5 million people. It's famous for its tropical rainforests, active volcanoes, and misty cloud forests. Howler, monkeys, iguanas, and sea turtles are just some of the amazing wildlife that live here. I traveled to Costa Rica to visit my friend Alberto. Alberto is a Tico, a nickname Costa Rican boys and men give themselves. Girls and women are known as Ticas. Most Ticos and Ticas speak Spanish, but some groups still speak their native languages. Alberto lives on a farm near the city of Agula with his dad, brother, and grandma. There are mountains all around Alberto's farm and cows roam freely in the countryside. His family grows fruits and vegetables that they sell at street markets or small shops in nearby towns. San Jose, the country's capital, is only an hour away by car. My favorite part of the farm was the horse barn where we played hide and seek. 
Alberto even showed me how to groom and ride a horse. During my stay, I tried Alberto's favorite food, gallo pinto, which is black beans and rice. It is the country's national dish. It can be eaten with every meal, even breakfast. Alberto took me to visit the town of La Fortuna, home of the famous Arsenal volcano. It is one of the 10 most active volcanoes in the whole world. We swam in a nearby hot spring. India. India is known for its ancient temples, spicy curries, and a game of cricket. It has over a billion people and 16 official languages. A few hours from the capital of New Delhi, you'll find the famous Taj Mahal, a 300-old monument visited by millions of tourists each year. Sundarbans National Park in eastern India has the largest mangrove forest in the world. These trees live where the land meets the ocean. The park's tiger reserve is home to over 200 Bengal tigers. Mumbai's busy streets are always packed with people traveling by cars, buses, and bicycles. Menina and I went to a Bollywood movie. These Indian films are popular all over the world. I especially love the singing and the dancing. Mina lives in an apartment with her mom, dad, and grandma. After school, Mina helps her dad make dinner. Tonight, I help too. We made a saucy chicken dish called Murg Makani. Fruits such as bananas and mangoes can grow in India's hot climate. We celebrated Holi. It's the festival of colors. On the third day of Holi, called Parva, we threw colorful powder and water at one another. This is how Indians welcome spring. Morocco. The Kingdom of Morocco and North Africa is home to 32 million people and many different cultures. Of the many languages spoken here, Arabic and Berber are official languages and French is also common. Uh, Morocco has two seasons, a hot, dry season and a rainy season. Heavy rain and snow often fall in the mountains, while it's drier and hotter closer to the coast. Hello from Morocco. I am visiting my friend Malik. He speaks Arabic and lives close to Rabat, the capital of Morocco. Malik lives with her parents, brothers, cousins, aunt, uncle, and grandmother. There is always someone to play with and share a meal with. The Sahara Desert is the largest in the world and covers much of southern Morocco. We went camel trekking through the dunes of Ur Chebi and saw a fennec fox. I love the Moroccan traditional dish of couscous and vegetables cooked in a tajin. Malik's family serves it with mint tea. For dessert, I tried cab il gazelle or gazelle's horns. These are pastries filled with honey and almonds. Delicious. Moroccans write using the Arabic alphabet. It was hot when I arrived. Malik and our family were each wearing a long, loose, hooded robe with sleeves. Men and women wear loose, comfortable clothes to keep cool in the hot temperatures. Greece. The country of Greece is divided into three regions. The mainland, the islands, and the Peloponnese, a peninsula south of the mainland. Over 10 million people live in Greece. Its ancient history, spectacular landscapes, and beautiful beaches attract visitors from all over the world. I saw lots of goats in Greece. People here raise them because goats do well in rocky, mountainous areas with very little grass. Also, since they are smaller than cows, they are much easier to keep. Goats are used for their meat, and their milk is used in cheese. Hello from Greece, where I'm visiting my friend Constantinus. He lives in Phyra, a city on the island of Santorini, about 120 miles from Greece's mainland. His aunt lives on the Greek island of Crete. Like most of Greece, Crete is known for its olive trees, which grow in the island's valleys and mountains. The olives make a flavorful oil that's used all over the world. We took a high-speed catamaran, a type of boat, to the capital city of Athens. The city is known for its ancient monuments and works of art. Check out the Parthenon. 
I can't believe something so incredible was built over 2,000 years ago. Constantinos, Elizabeth's mom, dad, sister, and sister's husband. Many children live with their parents, even once they're grown-ups. Like many homes here, his house is bright white. At school, Constantinos is learning to read and write in Greek. He showed them how to write some letters from the modern Greek alphabet. Greece hosted the first Olympic Games over 2,000 years ago. In ancient times, athletes received olive branch wreaths to wear on their heads instead of the medals given out at today's games. <clears throat> Canada. Canada has a population of about 35 million. It's made up of many terrains, mountains, grasslands, lakes, and oceans. When we traveled to the East Coast to visit the Maritimes, we saw the Bay of Fundy, a long ocean bay with the highest tides in the whole world. Canada is the second largest country in the world and its climate varies dramatically from coast to coast. Most of Canada is cold and snowy in the winter, but some parts have hot summers. Over the weekend, we visited the local farmer's market. Hi and bonjour from Canada. I visited my friend Cara. She lives in Ottawa, Canada's capital city. In Banff National Park, part of the Rocky Mountains, you could find moose, elk, bears, and even cougars. We had tortere for dinner, a traditional French-Canadian meat pie. At home, Kara speaks both English and French with her mom and brother. Aboriginal peoples were the first inhabitants of the land now known as Canada. Every June 21st, celebrations are held to honor First Nations, Inuit, and Menace to celebrate their contributions to Canadian society. Ottawa is famous for its stately parliament buildings. On the 1st of July, Kara and I joined thousands of others on Parliament Hill to celebrate Canada's birthday. Brazil. Close to 200 million people live in Brazil, the largest country in South America. It's known for its white sandy beaches, its huge rainforests, and grassland plains. The Amazon River runs right through Brazil and is one of the longest rivers in the world. While canoeing down Amazon, we saw blue and yellow macaws, uh, river turtles, and even pink river dolphins. Fernanda and her family speak Portuguese. Her parents are from Brasil, is the capital city of Brazil. Now they live in Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in the country. As in most of South Africa, the most popular sport in Brazil is soccer, also known as football. I joined Fernanda and her friends in a neighborhood match and could barely keep up with them. We spent some time with Fernandez Avo, or grandfather. He is a farmer and lives in a small rural area raising crops such as soybeans. The beans are sold all over the world. He took us to the local market to buy food for dinner. Beans, rice, and meat are food staples in the Brazilian culture. I went to Rio de Janeiro with Fernando's family for carnival. This is a big celebration in February that lasts four days and three nights. We saw parades, music, and dancers in brightly colored costumes. France. Nearly 66 million people live in France. Most of them speak French, the official language. The Tour de France takes place here. The annual bicycle race is one of the most popular sporting events in the world. Leone's mom was born in a region of France called Normandy. There are many dairy farms there that produce well-known French cheeses like Camembert and Brie. Bonjour! In France, I stay with my friend Leone. She lives in Paris, the capital city. Leone lives with her mom, dad, and sister in a building that was built hundreds of years ago. Paris is an old city and many historic buildings and monuments. Paris is home to the Lavoir, which is one of the most visited museums in the world. It houses the Mona Lisa, a famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci. It took us an entire day to see only half of this huge museum. The Eiffel Tower is another famous monument in France. A trip to the top meant standing in line for a while, but the view of Paris from above was worth the wait. I traveled by train with Leone and her family to Versailles, which is outside of Paris. Her mom packed a picnic, ham, cheese, and a popular French bread called a baguette. There are many ways to get around Paris. We mostly rode the Paris Metro, Paris's subway system. 
Biking is also popular. Leone rides her bike to school every day. Botswana. Botswana is found in South Central Africa and has a population of over 2 million people. Most of the country is covered by the Kalahari Desert. The people of Botswana are called Botswana. The official languages are English and Setswana. Poloko lives with his mom, dad, and sister in a round hut. She showed me the chicken coop in their yard. It's Polako's job to clean the coop and collect the eggs for his family to eat. Polako's cousin is a tour guide at Chobe National Park. He took us on a safari to see African wildlife, including giraffes, crocodiles, gazelles, hippos, and lions. For lunch, I saw sesawa with Polako's family. This is a popular dish in which the meat Often the beef is boiled, pounded, and shredded, and then served with rice or maize. In the Gamma land, in northwestern Botswana, the tribe weaves baskets that are sold all over the world. People in Botswana use them to store and carry food. On September 30th, we celebrate Botswana Day. There were street parties and parades to commemorate the country's independence from Great Britain. China. More than a billion people live in China. The large country has many different landscapes from deserts to oceans to mountains. Dragons are a symbol of good luck in China. Every June, people participate in dragon boat festivals across the country. The family shop for fish and clothes at the market. Market vendors also sell noodles, beans, and toys. Because China is so large, weather conditions vary depending on the region. The South has an extremely warm climate, while the Northeast hardly has a summer at all. We visited one of the most famous places in the world, the Great Wall of China. This historic wall, built to protect the Chinese Empire from attack, is believed to be over 2,000 years old and, it, and is so big it can be seen from outer space. Zano speaks Mandarin Chinese and learning to read and write at school using Chinese characters. Zano lives with his mom, dad, and younger sister. He is very close to his family. He eats rice with most wheels and almost everything with chopsticks. It was tricky to get the hang of them at first. I celebrated the Chinese New Year with his family. They handed out gifts of money in small red envelopes and we all danced in a traditional dragon costume. Philippines. The Philippines are found in Southeast Asia. The country is made up of more than 7,000 islands and has a population of over 100 million people. It has many tropical rainforests, along with hilly mountains and sandy beaches. Most people in the Philippines speak English. On weekends, Mary Lou likes to go to the ocean. We spent a whole day swimming and fishing. Afterwards, we had a roasted pig. It is a Filipino specialty. I thought it was delicious. We traveled all the way to the island of Mindanao, where I hoped to see the endangered Philippine eagle. It has large brown feathers on its head and a big black beak. It likes to eat monkeys. We walked to Manila Bay, the local port and harbor. Later, we went to Rizal Park with Mary Lou's family for a picnic. Her mom packed a traditional dish called adobo, a stewed chicken and vegetable served with rice. Like Mary Lou's family, most people in the Philippines live in cities. Mary and Lou and I shop for food at an outdoor market that also sold clothes, tools, and toys. Our snow cones were delicious. The Philippines is home to many volcanoes. Mount Manion is famous for erupting with lava more than 50 times over the last 400 years. Australia. Over 22 million people live in the land down under. Australia is the only country in the world that covers a whole continent. Its countryside, known as the Outback, is remote and full of grassland. Many people live in cities near the coast. The capital of Australia is Canberra. One of the best ways to explore the huge country is to travel on the Indian Pacific, which is a train journey named after the two great oceans it joins. The train crosses the whole continent from Perth, 
to Adelaide, to Sydney in four days and three nights. Joe took me to see rock art painted by his early ancestors. Aboriginal Australians were once the only people who lived in Australia. Today, people from all over the world call Australia home. During my visit, I saw a lot of koalas and kangaroos. Koalas live in trees and both animals carry their babies in a pouch. Kangaroos are protected in Australia because they are an important part of the country's ecosystem. Water activities are popular along the coast in Australia. Joe and I swam at the Great Barrier Reef, the largest coral reef system in the whole world. The United States. The United States of America is the third largest country in the world and is home to over 300 million people. America's landscapes include deserts, mountains, grasslands, and oceans. It is the home of Hollywood, a neighborhood in Los Angeles. It is the place to go if you want to see a movie star. The weather of this large country varies. The West Coast can be mild and rainy, while other parts of the country experience all four seasons. Alaska and Hawaii are the only states not connected to the rest of the country. Alaska is next to the Northwestern Canada, while Hawaii is a chain of islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Eddie's grandparents immigrated to the United States from Mexico, so his family eats many traditional Mexican foods. Eddie's family took me on a road trip all the way to New York City. We toured the American Museum of Natural History and caught a baseball game at Yankee Stadium. On the way back from New York, we visited the White House in the capital city, Washington, D.C. The White House is where the President of the United States lives and works. The President's family lives here too. Jordan. The Kingdom of Jordan is a country in the Middle East with a population of over 6 million people. Arabic is the official language. Jordan is ruled by a monarchy, which means that the king or queen in charge makes important decisions for the country. The Dead Sea has more salt than any body of water in the world. Swimming in this water felt more like floating. Jordan is usually very hot with some rain showers in the western part of the country. Heenan and his dad live in the capital city, Ammon. The white buildings throughout the city are why Ammon is nicknamed the White City. Hannon's cousin works at the Azrek Wetland Reserve. We see many unusual birds there, like the avocat with its long, thin beak. In the morning, Hanin and I ate thick yogurt. I dipped bread in the labneb and then into a spice mixture called the zatar. It's so tasty. <clears throat> Hannon's dad took us on a visit to a tribe. The Badunans live in the desert all year round and have adapted to its difficult climate. We had tea with the family in a tent made out of goat hair. I saw a street busker playing a cool instrument called the rababa. It looked like a cross between a guitar and a violin. I went with Hanin's class on a field trip to the ancient Roman theater in downtown Amman. Her teacher said the highest seats were the most popular because people thought they were closest to the gods. Now I'm going to show you how to make a handprint rainbow craft. This is what it looks like. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to color the rainbow any colors that you like using crayons or magic markers. Next, you're going to cut out three hands. You're going to trace one hand onto the manila paper. Trace one hand onto the light brown paper, and you're gonna trace the third hand onto the dark brown paper, and then you're gonna glue each hand onto the rainbow, and then you're gonna glue the cotton balls onto each cloud, just like this. Bye everyone, I'll see you soon.